God too. Amen. Remember, yes. God put all of this, everything that's in existence, that is God right there. Amen. Everything. Our ancestors, they were connected with nature in, in, in ways that um, quantum physics and stuff like that is just starting to come around into, you understand? And we even have that depicted, you know what I mean? So um, we definitely gonna have to start getting back into the mysteries of God, the esoteric, the hidden, that which was sac sacred and locked up for a time such as this, a time such as this. This is our time to unlock those scrolls, those artifacts, those powers, that Wakanda, yeah, it's real. Black Panther was very prophetic, and we need to understand. Let's, we, we need to revisit Black Panther before we get out of eight, 2018. Let's, now that we, you know, the excitement, the hype has died down, let's have a powwow, family gather together. You know, we used to have ceremonies where the whole tribe gathers together. Believe it or not, we used to do these things. You understand, the whole entire tribe gathered. So it's time to do that with Black Panther, and let's really analyze. And I would suggest starting with the tribe that the creator of Black Panther gave credit to in 1978 in the seventh issue of Black Panther comic book, and that's the Gikuyu tribe, the, specifically the Ajiru clan of the Gikuyu tribe. Start there. Amen. Uh, this might seem like a naive question, but I heard it's a buzz going around that the World War III would be on the continent of Africa. What do you think of that? Not on our watch. Not. Yeah, go ahead. Did you want to? Uh, I mean, even if it's so, I mean, again, fear of propaganda um, in the media is, is, is just a dangerous weapon. I mean, World War Three is the media right now. So I wouldn't concern myself, you know, being paranoid about what war is going on, which military is here, China's doing this. You know, these this foreign nationals doing this. Just go to Africa, go visit. I mean, the first step before have have you visited Africa before? Oh no. Yeah, the first step is just go get your passport and go visit. Yeah. I mean, the whole. Okay. Now, okay. I would. Now, Dinas, I I want to interrupt because I had a guy over here, and he said he's been communicating with you, and he said he got his passport, he got his money, he got everything together. He said he's just ready to go. What he got to do? Tell him what to do next. <laughs> okay, now I, I would, uh, uh, here we go, I'm gonna walk you through it. Go to secretflying.com and get, find a cheap ticket, secretflying.com. They should be paying me, all right? And they usually have, like I bought my ticket round trip to the Ivory Coast this past October for 350 bucks, round trip. So, I mean, there's deals out there. Mm -hmm. So you just gotta go search, figure out where you wanna go. Buy a ticket. Go to Ethiopia. You don't need visa. Okay. Right. You don't, you don't need a visa Ethiopia. I've been. So. You also don't need a visa for South Africa either. You, right. you don't need a visa for South Africa. And you don't need to have shots. You can decide tonight with a passport that you're getting on the plane tomorrow yep. and go to South Africa and they will give you a 90-day visa on arrival. Yep. And if you decide to stay longer, you can go to the uh, border of another country. South Africa borders about five countries, be it Zimbabwe, uh, Mozambique, uh, Swaziland, and they re-stamp your thing in and you have another 90 days. I also want to say two things, that we are definitely stronger together than we are apart. Yes. Amen. We Amen. are stronger together than we are apart. And I think that this panel is even exemplary of that. As you listen to everyone, everyone brings their own strengths and has their own calling as it pertains to Africa. Because I will tell you that even as a, a woman of God myself, that my spirituality has escalated off the charts by living in Africa or even when you visit Africa because it's just a higher spiritual vibration. And one of my largest takeaways of having lived in South Africa for seven years is how I see successful people still counting on God 100%. They're not trusting their riches and things. They really are not. So it keeps you grounded and aware of who your source is 
and how you have to lean, hope, trust, and depend on him because you're not going to be successful. And I know Dinus will agree because we've talked about this on his show. You're not going to be successful in Africa being carnal minded. The requirement for success on the continent of Africa is that you ascend spiritually. Amen. And be responsible for your success and others. All right. My other uh, comment that I share everywhere I go is that do not go to Africa looking for a job. Go to Africa to create an opportunity for yourself and others. I think unemployment here in the U.S. is 3.78, something like that what they say. So why would we leave a 4% uh, unemployment market to go to Africa where it's 30, 40% in many places, if not more, and take other people's jobs? That's the other thing. Africans have the right to get their lives on go. You have an American passport. You can have three jobs in this country if that's what you chose to do. So don't go looking for a job. Go and create an opportunity for yourself and others and look around in your influence, to your skills, to your strategic relationships and come together and we all can win because we are stronger together than we are apart. All right, with that being said, thank you. I'm respecting the time format. We have this great feast that is about to be served. Let's give a round of applause for this amazing panel. Um, also, I wanna say this. Um, Tigner, Rob, um, CEO Munson, Steve, Rolling Out Magazine. Uh, let's give them a round of applause because they've been live streaming this entire panel on rollingout.com and it takes information delivery like that to make this work. I'm sorry, man. We Hold on. Let's if do I this. let one person ask a question, then it. Well, and, and, and Madam, I'm going to let you answer, ask the question, but I want to say this. Please make sure you connect with these folks when we get off the stage because they have a wealth of knowledge, way more things they could say, and all of them got a business card, okay? So you can connect with them right when we finish the panel. Go ahead, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Holmes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. With AU Ambassador, Dr. Holmes, what is your message to the So actually, these are things that are going to be set up in 2019, and they, I think she's still working on it, um, the, you know, so everything, that's why I'm just saying, get yourselves ready, guys. Get yourselves ready, and the minute something happens, move into it, because I know sometimes we like to drag our feet, but 2019, stay tuned, support Black, support the Black channels, because we'll be sharing a lot of the information as we're led, and something's coming. Something's coming. Be eternally blessed, each and every one of you. We love you. Definitely. I got. I gotta say. I gotta say one thing. The spirit. It, it, it wouldn't let me. Well, we Look. The I, I'm just. We just gonna end this off with one question in in response to her question. I want to know why I'm hearing things about the African Union taking this new bank that's supposed to be coming, this continent-wide bank. Why is that? I'm hearing it's supposed to be located somewhere in China. So how many people here are interested in starting a Building Bridges Investment Fund, just by a show of hands? Oh, that's a brilliant okay, idea. Okay, we just want to get an idea, because we are working on some things. We are talking and trying to put something in motion. But I just want to say thank you.